Hi, this is Steven. In this video, I want to do a basics review of Maya 2016. So to start off with, I want to talk about the panel here. This is your viewport, which is a perspective view. Uh, you have three axes. Uh, this is all set up on a XYZ coordinate system, and you notice the icon in the bottom that corresponds with the grid. X is going left to right. Z is going front to back and Y is up and down in Maya by default. Notice the red line is pointing to the right. That is the positive X side. Anything past the center or the origin, the origin is the zero, zero, zero point and the numbers start zero and go in a positive direction, one, two, three, four, five uh, in X direction and it would be zero and negative one, negative two in a negative direction. Uh, the same with the Z. The Z is in the front, so this is positive Z. From the origin going back would be negative Z. And then from the origin going straight up is positive Y, and of course the origin going straight down. Uh, when objects are created, they are created with a pivot point. Uh, I'm talking about primitive objects such as these in your shelf here. And that pivot point is the center of the object that is placed at the origin, the zero, zero, zero by default. I'll go ahead and throw in an object there and notice uh, that it is placed at the intersection of the X, Y, and Z axes. Um, I want to talk about the uh, channel box here is the top right. And this, the channel box will tell you where that object, the selected object is in X, Y, and Z. And notice it's 0, 0, 0. This can be changed, uh, but we'll get, in that to us. we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but first, let's learn. So we know the viewport uh, is a perspective grid of X, Y, Z, and that location is determined by those X, Y, Z coordinates. Um, so let's talk about how to navigate within a scene. So I'm on a Mac and the magic button is the option key for the Mac. Uh, meaning if I hold down option and left mouse click and drag it's going to allow me to rotate the camera and the scene around some focal point. And that focal point by default is the origin. So I can and I'm just holding down option, holding down left mouse button, and I can uh, rotate the scene so I can see what's behind my object and from the object. And you notice the axes here are changing. Okay. Option and middle mouse drag is going to pan that object. That's changing the focal point. Actually, I'm grabbing the whole scene. The focal point staying in the center, but I'm moving the scene out of the way, so the focal point is still here now. If I were to uh, uh, option left mouse it's I'm I'm spinning around some uh, some position here instead of the origin if I ever want to bring that origin back you can select an object whose center is on the origin and hit F to frame and that centers that object in the scene and since it's pivot points on the origin uh, I'm back here um, if I hold down left, I'm sorry, if I hold down option and right mouse drag, that will uh, dolly the camera, move the camera closer or further away. It's like a zoom. Um, but I guess a, a, a real zoom in a, a camera is handled by the lenses alone. This is actually moving the camera closer or farther away. Now let's talk about the space bar. If you tap the space bar when you're in this view, it will go to what's called the four view. You can also get there through this um, layout icon. Now let's talk about the menus. Uh, those are important to review when you're creating a polygon from the menu. So you go to create polygon primitives and you can select the sphere, the cube, the cylinder. Uh, I'm going to tear off this menu by clicking that double line. You also notice a little a hollow square at the end. That is the option box for this. So I can create something without using the option box and it's going to remember 
whatever settings were placed there last. If no settings were ever placed there, then it's the original or default settings. Uh, so if I click the sphere, it's going to uh, create it uh, based on certain parameters that were in the settings. To see those, you click on the option box. So it created that sphere with a radius of 1, axis subdivisions of 20, and height subdivisions of 20. Uh, if I have it selected and I change this, it doesn't really do anything. This is only for creating new objects. Uh, however, these attributes can be changed and a new object created. And notice that this is quite different from the original object. Uh, I created this one with the sphere button here. And, but if I click the sphere button again, it's going to remember the last settings, which were these. Uh, so it may be good practice when you're using uh, these option boxes to go to edit and reset settings anytime you begin before you begin uh, doing anything. That'll, that'll just clear any values and reset it to the default. And if I apply now, it's going to be this one again. All right. Now, one last... Uh, thing about these when I create something I, I told you that you can't really edit that from the option box here but you can edit that in the channel box you can edit those creation nodes if you go down in the channel box to the inputs area I can click on the number or the name and I can middle mouse click and drag left and right and that'll adjust this interactively which I think is pretty cool now once we get into component level modeling, which deals with moving vertices and edges, and or if we add extrusions, or we start adding to more geometry to this, then this becomes less useful and you can't really go back and tweak these creation attributes uh, once we've edited the model. But they're very useful right after you create it and uh, getting you started with your initial shape. Um, so just remember that uh, very useful if by chance this is not there you may want to s check your construction history to make sure it's on uh, the construction history so if I is this little clock here in the top if you don't see it, you might need to click these little bars of the triangle and you notice there's a clock with some lines if that is not on and I create a sphere notice there is no creation node here some people may use uh, turn construction history off if they're trying to save resources on their machine uh, but uh, for most intents and purposes I, I, I prefer to keep that on and then you notice that it has these it's very useful for you know you're building a pipe I can jump down here and say hey I want very interactively uh, manipulate those primitives okay since we're on primitives now, it's a good time to talk about our three main uh, tools here, your move, your scale, and your rotate. There are also shortcut keys that correspond with these, which are W, E, and R. Uh, so if I hit W here, I'll bring up my little uh, screen caster, uh, key caster. So I hit W, and it brings up a manipulator. I can pull these handles, and it will pull in the X direction or in a specific axis direction. I hit E for rotates, the same deal. And uh, R for scale. Okay. And I can scale in a single axis. Or I can scale universally in all three axes. I will say something about the move tool. I hit W here. I you can grab the center box and move it. I would not recommend that. When you're in the perspective view, I'd rather you use these handles because it's hard to know exactly where you're moving something. You know, is this uh, when you're uh, grabbing the center here? Uh, it's better to, if I have to jump to a front view, I can hit F to frame because it was already selected. And then I can move something exactly uh, where I need to in a front or side view. Hit F to frame. But uh, that's that's about it for this review. We've covered the basics of the panels. 
Um, we've covered the option boxes uh, in the create menus. We've talked about the XYZ coordinates. Um, and I hope this will help you get started with Maya. Uh, you can also enter values directly into the channel box here. For example, zero takes it back to the origin. I can zero out the rotations and I can take the scale back to one. Um, uh, thanks for watching this video and please watch the next videos which will begin to cover duplicate special and the pivot point. Thanks for watching.